so, we're in the boat, here we are, in Warsaw. What's happening? What are you working on at the minute? What's coming up? What's... So there's a few things, uh, Dave, that we're working on. I have a long-standing interest, I think, you know, in looking at children, mm -hmm. smoking, and now also children, and eat cigarettes and vaporizers. And um, so we've been looking at all the data over the last couple of years, actually, because there's this, there's this um, conception or this idea that lots of young people are trying these cigarettes. That means they're getting hooked on nicotine, and then this concept they might start using tobacco. Now, we don't see any evidence of that yet, so what we've been trying to ask is, well, what's happening? So we've got a paper coming out, uh, hopefully next week, okay. which compares uh, four surveys in the UK, all done in the same 12-month period, mm -hmm. and they're remarkably consistent. And what they find is that 12% of teenagers, so these are 11 to 16 or 18 year olds, have tried an e-cigarette, ever tried. But when you get down to regular use, uh, it's very low, it's anywhere between 2 and 3%. But then when you look at who those regular users are, all of them are young people who've already used tobacco. So tobacco's come first. So tobacco's come first, as far as we can see. Yeah. The only exception to that is in one survey in Wales, uh, a very large sample, they found about 52 never smoking young people who were using e-cigarettes more than once a month. But those are the only examples we were, were those 52 using tobacco? So those 52 are young people who've never smoked, right. who are using e-cigarettes more regularly. But and they're the only ones we've been able to find in these four surveys. And they, but they haven't gone on to smoke No, we haven't got any evidence that they've, they've gone on. But, you know, the, we need follow-up on these surveys. But this idea that young people are using e-cigarettes you know, in large numbers when they've never used tobacco isn't true. That's right. the first thing. And secondly, we don't have any evidence yet that the young people who try e-cigarettes then become smokers. So the gateway... Is so the, the, ga the gateway is isn't the gateway isn't open at the moment. <laughs> so it's, a, it's a closed gate. It's a, it's a closed gate. So anyway, um, we just keep tracking these things, Dave. We keep looking at the surveys. We, we keep our eye on the data. That's where we are. So I think that's reassuring. And you know, politicians particularly get really confused about this. So we just need to keep ma explaining it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so yeah. Explain it. Explain it. Explain it. And eventually it will go in. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. So what, what else is on the card? So uh, I guess the other thing, uh, this week on Friday the Scottish Government will publish its public health bill uh -huh. and that has a lot of content on e-cigarettes and what they're calling nicotine vaporisers in the bill. Um, so essentially it will introduce an age of sale in Scotland or, or, or recommend that. It will ban proxy purchase, mm -hmm. which I know is a bit more controversial. Yeah. It will uh, introduce the requirement for people who sell e-cigarettes to be on a retail register but not the same one as tobacco, which is important. Oh, that's very good. Um, and more controversially, it will introduce a fairly comprehensive dom domestic advertising ban with the exception of point of sale. Right. So promotion will still be permitted at the point of sale, leaflets will still be permitted at, in shops, at displays in shops, you know, um, gantries, but not big billboards, um, not radio and TV advertising in Scotland. So. Okay, so but any English advertising that gets across the border, they're not going to try and shut that No, down. that's right. And of course with the TBD, you know, it's yeah. going to change anyway. This whole proxy purchasing thing, as I recall, they, they did say something along the lines of, yeah, we're going to bring it in, but we're not going to enforce it. Well, there have been no convictions in Scotland for proxy purchase of cigarettes since they brought that in. Right. So it's actually very difficult to enforce, that's the first thing yeah. to say. Um, and it's not a, I wouldn't think enforcement's uh, really cracking down is going to be a priority for them. It's more that it sends the signal, a bit like proxy purchase of alcohol, they're clearly very different substances, that this is an age-restricted product. Uh, and if it's got an age restriction, then adults shouldn't be buying it for children. It's more the statement, I think that's the important thing. Yeah. And you know, they're not going to try and punish the parent who supplies their child who's smoking tobacco with an e-cigarette. You know, that's not what this is about. Okay. Um, I think I think as long as, as what I would call sensible parents are protected in this yeah, and are not yeah. likely to fall foul of what I consider to be a little bit of a daft yeah. piece of legislation, then that's that's, that's but What good. I would say for anybody who's in Scotland is that the bill goes through, through three stages. 
And at stage one, there's the opportunity to speak to your MSP about the bill, about your concerns, and get those questions raised in the, in the Health and Sport Committee. Right. So for any vapors in Scotland, they want to speak to their member of the Scottish Parliament about it. That's a good idea. Yes, I would. I would echo that. If you uh, if you're in Scotland, go go talk to your MSP because we heard last night. I don't know whether you were in on the conversation, but apparently the whole Denmark situation has been more or less put on ice because vapors have been going and talking to their MPs. That, that's yeah, well, I mean, we heard um, from, I can't remember who it is now, uh, that while MPs and MSPs and MEPs are fully aware of the, the online petitions and thunderclaps yeah. and all that kind of thing, they more or less dismiss them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's only really when you go and see them or write them a letter that they, they, they kind of go, hello, they're yeah. serious about this. Yeah. So it's the same in Scotland. Do it. Well, that's right. And the work that Simon and others have done in Wales is a good example of that. Isn't yes. It? Going and seeing the members. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it, it shows that it does work. Yeah, so, yeah. So what else is on the cards? So I guess the only other thing was just briefly, because I know we're going to go into the sessions now, is just to emphasise the importance of the continued advocacy, as you've just talked about. Mm. So um, from my perspective, it's about being an advocate for the evidence and trying to communicate that clearly. And, uh, you know, uh, colleagues can do the same yes. from their own experiences, which are just as powerful. Um, as me looking at a, a study and you know, communicating that. So I think we all have to be advocates. And I think yes. we've got a challenging time uh, in the next year or two. Yes, so very much so. Just keep plugging away. We'll keep on banging on. We'll keep on banging on. Linda Bolt for the moment. Thank you very much. You we nice may talk again later. Nice to speak to you. Thank you.